Hi folks, Mr. Tesalonian back here again. Uh, what you see here on my right is my first bank of ground battery cells. I'm going to walk you up close here and show you exactly what we've got going on. Uh, it's very simple materials. I was able to find some old zinc pipe uh, that uh, was from old uh, houses back in the 40s or 50s. And I've got some iron pipe here, some old iron pipe. These two working together with a little bit of an insulator between them when we bury them produces very high voltage. Under load, I was getting about a half a volt per cell at about 30 milliamps. So a pretty good amount of power from each one of these, hopefully with some telluric currents involved. As we put each one of these cells in the ground, we'll actually incorporate into the ground currents or telluric currents. And hopefully that'll actually increase. And the more of these cells we put in in a dead straight line, the more power we should actually see from this system. Uh, a couple of the things that I've done here to try to pick where I was going to like incorporate this ground battery system. First of all, this is my uh, septic drain field here. I'm on the downhill side of that, so all the moisture from the septic drain field will constantly be moving downhill from that system. So I located all the pipes and I moved off of that a bit, and I've drawn this nice line all the way across with the rope to kind of give myself a dead straight line. These ground batteries want to work a lot better if they're in a, in a perfect line with each other. Uh, and if you actually put your banks a long ways apart and put that uh, always in a straight line, if you use a compass and make sure everything's lined up, the telluric currents from the earth will actually get involved, help stop some of the corrosion on your bars here that you're putting in the ground and improve your current uh, and your loads. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna take you up close. I'm gonna show you the insulator I'm gonna install between these two conductors. Uh, it's just basically a piece of wood that'll help keep them really close together yet they can't electrically uh, connect and the galvanic effect can still take place in the ground around them. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is show you those, put one of these together. I'm gonna bury one and show you exactly how to do this. I'm gonna finish the rest of these and then at the end of this, we're gonna hook them all together and see if we can't actually turn on some form of a DC light bulb. So let me get up close here and show you exactly how to put a cell together. Hi folks. All right, so what we're gonna do here is to show you one of our cells completed. Uh, this is really simple how to do this. What I've got here is I've got our old iron gas pipe uh, that's nicely corroded. It actually works pretty well that way. And we've got an old zinc pipe. Uh, this is probably zinc with other materials, but this is from old housing stuff from the 40s or 50s. And I was able to find quite a bit of that, and it gives very, very high voltage readings. Uh, so these two working together seem to do very well. And you want your conductors as close as you can get them when you put these together. All right, so what we have is an insulator between these two uh, conductor materials. And in this case, it's just a piece of wooden paneling. It's about an eighth inch thick, uh, so that'll actually keep them from touching, yet the the galvanic effect, because it's wood, will allow moisture to pass between them. Uh, the galvanic effect will still take place in making a very high voltage and amperage reading since the cell is very close together. Uh, so what we have here basically is an unput together cell. Once again, it's just the iron pipe, your zinc pipe, and a little strip paneling and some tape wrapped around it. So now what I'm going to do is finish putting together all my cells and then I'll bury uh, a few of these in the ground. We're going to run them in circuit here and see if we can actually show an increase in voltage and amperage. All right, folks, so we've now let this entire trench uh, fill with water and fully saturate the ground overnight. Uh, it's the next day after putting all these ground battery banks into uh, place here. What I'm going to show you here is exactly what each bank is producing voltage and amperage wise. Uh, I'm not too thrilled with the results without an electrolyte, which I don't want to use quite yet. I'm looking for a natural result without using any kind of chemicals or salts. Uh, so what we've got are bridges from each one of our little ground battery banks here. Copper bridges, running them in uh, basically series all the way across. Now one of the things I've uh, kind of come to here is obviously most fuel cell and uh, energy cell technology has two anodes in a cathode, whereas here we're only having one anode, one cathode in each one of these cells. Uh, what I'm thinking is, is with the low voltages that I'm seeing, possibly by taking another anode material, same uh, iron that I'm using here, and bridging a horseshoe across the top and putting another cathode on the other, or anode, I'm sorry, on the other side of this cathode material, uh, we may increase this quite a bit. So that's gonna be the next test after what you see here today is actually implementing another uh, anode on either side of our cathode and bridging our two anodes over the top of each other. We're hoping that that might work. We'll see if it actually produces much higher potentials. Uh, so for now though, what I have is uh, the meter hooked up with this extension cord 
to this uh, cell here. Now the very last cell you see there, for some reason, it is shorting itself out. When I pounded it into the ground and dug it out, I must have uh, got the two into contact with each other somewhere down in there, so that one's no good. I'm going to have to pull it and reset that. But we're, So we're going to run from this one here. You can see I've got the meter set up here. I've got the uh, negative lead to the meter actually pressed against the side of it. And uh, right here you should be able to see that I have the positive lead hooked into this bundle of wire that's connected here uh, to our uh, outside of our entire ground battery leg here. And this is the iron pipe on this side. So we're going to go ahead and walk down this thing. First of all, let's show you the voltage uh, from a single cell here. Let's turn the meter on. And I'm going to go ahead and just use this to walk up uh, here in the shot and move around. Hopefully you can see what I'm getting for reading. So it's saying about 0.455 seven slightly increasing as it goes here all right so about a half a volt in that single cell right there let's go ahead and hook our couple up here our uh, bridge over okay let's move down to the next one all right so we're going to first of all disconnect the bridge to the next cell here we're going to go up to this and test this out and see exactly what it's now up to and now it's up to 0.6 eight no six nine zero of a volt sorry for the wind folks so we have increased not doubling though but we are increasing in voltage so real quickly here let me hook that bridge back up it's just got a good electrical connection in there okay let's go down to the next one let's unhook this to the next cell and once again we'll take our meter and let's test this out and we are at 0.749 and rising. So three quarters of a volt right there. So we are increasing in voltage as we go down the line here. All right, so let's hook that couple back up. It's not doubling though in voltage like we'd want to see from the half a volt per cell that we are seeing. All right, so now we're down to this one. Let's do the same thing here. All right, so let's make contact. And we are at 0.804 of a volt and rising. So we've risen about uh, 0.050 of a volt there. So let's go down to the next cell. Let's hook that back up. Make sure these got good electrical connection. Otherwise, we won't see what we're looking for here. Okay, so let's do it once again. And we'll use the meter up here. And we have increased from... 0.808 of a volt to 0.884 so almost the same uh, 0.05 of a volt increase there very similar increase uh, in its voltage almost up to 0.9 of a volt if we held that there for a moment to get there let's move on to our next cell here okay all right so let's take that one off connection there and not such a big increase this is where I'm hitting some issues here is that all of a sudden one of these or two of these are not actually increasing my potential voltage and I'm not really sure why it could just be a connection uh, it could be a, a rock that's actually making some kind of electrical connection between the two underground and the rock may be okay so there we go could have been a connection there so we are up to 0 0.901 of a volt uh, still a little bit of an increase there. Let's go down to the next one. Okay, let's hook that up. Okay, so... Let's unhook that. And let's give this one a go. Sorry, folks. That rod wants to swing into the place there. Okay. So, once again... Not the same increase, only 0.918. So once again, that could be a bad connection here. Not really sure why it's doing that. Okay, 0.929. All right, folks, so here we are, we're ready to go. We've got our meter set, so let's hook one line to the meter. Let's go ahead and hook one line over here. See what we get. Well, that's not very impressive. We've only increased to 1.48 of a volt. Uh, hopefully, as the galvanic effect starts to take place between these cells, 
hopefully that voltage will increase quite dramatically. I was really hoping to see something uh, quite a bit larger than that. So there you go. We're going to try to figure out why we have some of these losses uh, all the way through the system, why it's, it does increase as we come down, but why doesn't it increase, uh, you know, per the half a volt per cell? So I'm going to keep working on this. I hope you enjoyed. Until next time, this is Mr. Teslonian and the Teslonian Man Show.